can the electric grid handle EVs? Hi, I'm Jeremy with Swepco, and I'm working with our customers and communities to install public charging infrastructure that makes electric vehicles attractive to drive and helps make charging easy to access. One question I get a lot is, does our electric grid produce enough electricity to handle the adoption of electric vehicles, or EVs for short? In order to best answer this question, I'll approach it from three different angles. First, we need to know how much energy EVs require. Next, we need to look at the overall production of power in the United States. Is there enough electricity produced today to support the number of existing and future EVs that will connect to the grid? And finally, what's the rate of EV adoption? Or simply put, at what rate are EVs replacing traditional internal combustion engine vehicles? So now that you know what I'll cover, let's dive right into my first point. How much energy do EVs require? In order to answer this aspect of the larger question, let's borrow a scenario from a source called Engineering Explained. Now, this scenario is worst case for our electrical grid. Let's assume that every driver in the United States instantly switches to EVs overnight. According to the U.S. Department of Transportation, the number of licensed drivers is roughly 230 million. For those 230 million drivers, the average number of miles driven per year comes to about 13,500 miles. This is based on data from car and driver. If we multiply those two numbers together, 230 million drivers by 13,500 miles a year, we get approximately 3.1 trillion miles driven each year. Now, because EVs don't use fuel in the same sense as traditional gas vehicles, which measures efficiency by miles per gallon, or MPG, the comparable efficiency measure for EVs is MPGE, or miles per gallon equivalent. The most efficient EVs available today have upwards to 142 MPGE, and the least efficient EVs get roughly 70 MPGE. Now, it's important to remember that technology advances quickly, and EVs are getting more and more efficient by the day. Every year, we're seeing the MPGE continually improve, but for the sake of this example, we'll say that the average EV on the road today gets 100 MPGE. So let's do some more math. From the EPA, one gallon of gas equals 33.7 kilowatt hours. If we take our previous number of 3.1 trillion miles driven each year in the United States, and divide it by the fuel economy of 100 MPGE, we get 31 billion MPGE. Next, we'll multiply this number by the electric equivalent of a gallon of gas, 33.7 kilowatt hours, and that gives us nearly 1 trillion kilowatt hours. So in this example where every US driver switches to EVs overnight, the total amount of energy needed would be 1 trillion kilowatt hours. To make things even harder for the grid, let's add another 10% to our 1 trillion kilowatt hour number. This will account for possible transmission losses and other various factors. This brings us to a total of 1.1 trillion kilowatt hours that would be needed if every single driver in the US has their own personal EV. Now this brings me to my second point. Are electric companies producing enough energy to power the transition to EVs? According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, in 1950, the U.S. produced 335 billion kilowatt hours. By 1960, this number had more than doubled to 760 billion kilowatt hours. Now, this increase is important, and at the end of this video, we'll discuss one of the major reasons why this jump in energy production occurred and why it's relevant for our discussion today. In 2020, U.S. electric companies produced roughly 4.1 trillion kilowatt hours. So, in a 60-year span, from 1960 to 2020, we saw the amount of energy produced in the United States increase by a little over five times. Or, to put it in the context of a year-over-year -year basis, the U.S. experienced around 4% growth in energy production every year. Connecting my first two points, our country today produces about 4.1 trillion kilowatt hours per year and will need an additional 1.1 trillion kilowatt hours to power the transition to electric transportation. 1.1 trillion of 4.1 trillion makes up roughly 27% of the total amount of energy currently produced in the United States. Now this may seem like a significant number, 
And if we stopped here, it could appear that the grid would not be able to handle the mass adoption of electric vehicles using this example. However, we aren't seeing mass adoption. The current rate of adoption for EVs in the United States today is sitting around 2%. Out of every 100 vehicles sold, just two are fully electric. However, this rate is steadily going up. Here at AEP and SWEPCO, we have committed to electrifying our small and medium duty fleet vehicles to fully electric by 2030. Companies like Amazon, FedEx, GM, Uber, Ford, and the United States Postal Service have also committed to going all electric from as early as 2030 to as late as 2050. By 2030, EVs are predicted to make up 19% of the total US auto sales. This means that the grid can absolutely handle electric vehicles. A current 2% adoption rate will get us on the path, but nowhere close to our example of 230 million EV drivers or 100% total adoption. Even if 20% of all US drivers switch to EVs overnight, instead of the span of a decade as predicted by 2030, these EVs would only need a little more than 5% of the country's current electricity output. If we use the annual 4% growth rate of energy output I calculated earlier, it would only take a little more than a year to make up this additional energy consumption. Do you remember when I noted the importance of the massive increase of energy production during the 1950s? One of the main reasons for the doubling of production was due to the mass adoption of a new technology, one that required electricity, yet has changed the world and would be hard to live without today. What is this technology? Air conditioning. In 1931, engineers H. H. Schultz and J. Q. Sherman developed the first window AC unit that had many of the same features we still see today. One year after its invention, these new window AC units were available for purchase. It was a hefty price tag and was out of the reach for a majority of Americans. However, at the start of the 1950s, thanks to increased American prosperity after World War II and the development and refining of the technology, the price for AC units went down and were more accessible to the public. So what do AC units have to do with electric vehicles? Could you imagine if people in the 1950s said, I'd like to live in a temperature controlled house, but I don't think our grid can handle this. So I'll just live through the summer months in misery. No, people and companies saw a great opportunity. They recognized the ingenuity of a new technology and they addressed the obstacles that came with it. So people not only in America, but around the world could enjoy cooler temperatures in their homes there were obstacles to overcome with the mass adoption of AC units, just as there are obstacles and hurdles to overcome with the adoption of EVs. But utilities can meet this challenge. Our grid can handle the change, and years down the road, we'll all be appreciative that utilities and other key stakeholders were once again up to the challenge. For more information and resources on electric vehicles, please visit swepco.com drive.